good evening and welcome to the press conference in, of the, on the occasion of the very first summit of the European political community takes place in Prague. Uh, firstly, I would like to give the floor to Prime Minister of the Czech Republic, Petr Fiala. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud that Prague hosted the first ever European political community meeting. I would uh, to thank so much to Emmanuel, to Mr. President Emmanuel Macron for coming up with the idea of uh, EPC and to Charles Michel for making it happen and developing it uh, further with us. Our common task was to create an informal platform where we can cooperate, share ideas and develop solutions to return peace and prosperity to Europe. And I think that we succeeded. We don't want to replace existing formats of cooperation. We did not adopt any official resolution. We just feel the need of having a space for informal exchange of views on ongoing events in Europe and beyond. This meeting is taking place at a critical moment for the future of the European continent. Russia's aggression against Ukraine challenges our shared security and stability and affects us all in many ways. The fact that 44 leaders of European partners come here to discuss this aim of future cooperation is an important, important achievement. I am glad that we had an opportunity to discuss several challenging topics of initial importance such as peace, stability, migration, energy security, and economy. We did so during the plenary session, bilateral meetings, and roundtables. Our collective goal is to work together on strengthening the security, stability, and prosperity of Europe. And I hope that our today's discussion will be followed by mutual actions. Ahead of the next meeting, leaders agreed to work of initiatives and shared interests. As you can see, the European political community is a useful format, and I'm looking forward to our meeting in Kishinev, followed by Spain and United Kingdom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, an opportunity to uh, speak the language of the host country. I'm really proud uh, that... Uh, Prague has hosted uh, this historic first summit of the European political community. Uh, I, as I said uh, in English, I'd like to thank uh, President Macron for having produced this idea of uh, an informal group. And I'd like to thank uh, all those who helped in the organization of this unique event. Our aim was not and is not to replace uh, existing European organizations uh, and institutions. We've got uh, plenty of them already after all. Nor did we wish uh, uh, to make any official declaration at the end of this meeting. Instead, uh, we wanted to create uh, a forum for exchanges of views between European countries, uh, a forum which uh, isn't uh, tied to particular conclusions. I instead, uh, these are countries which uh, don't necessarily meet, uh, and that's why this is such a significant uh, event. Uh, we are living through very difficult times. Uh, Forty-five uh, European countries uh, have talked about uh, cooperation about uh, finding solutions together. That's a huge success. We had a, a discussion uh, in, in the plenary, uh, in, in round tables. Uh, uh, we talked about uh, stability, peace, uh, migration, energy security, and of course the European economy. Our common aim is to cooperate, uh, to foster stability, uh, security, and prosperity in Europe as a whole. It's quite clear that this platform, the, the, this format uh, for European political cooperation makes sense. And that's why we intend to continue. The next meeting will be in Kishine. And we've agreed uh, also that uh, there will be further meetings in Spain and then in the United Kingdom. And I'm looking forward uh, to uh, the next meeting. Floor to President of Moldova, Ms. Maya Sandu. 
Dear Prime Minister Fiala, dear President Emmanuel Macron, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the Czech EU Presidency for hosting the first meeting of the European Political Community, an initiative launched under the French EU Presidency by President Macron, an initiative that Moldova is happy to be part of. It is a journey for the wider Europe that we embark on today. We see the European political community as a platform to strengthen our collective trust and solidarity. As we establish the EPC in these difficult times, one of its first object objectives is to act together so that sustainable peace and respect for international law are restored everywhere on the European continent. Securing our borders and keeping our people safe remains one of our main priorities. We can achieve peace only by acting together and showing solidarity during these moments of hardship. This starts with helping Ukraine restore its territorial integrity within its internationally recognized borders. We are united in condemning Russian aggression against Ukraine and the illegal annexation of its territories. We are united in our commitment to help Ukraine uphold its sovereignty. Further efforts are needed to strengthen European security in the mid and long term. Energy security and affordability was the other important topic that we have discussed, and we should not allow the energy crisis to undermine our democracies. The road ahead is not easy, and only together can we solve these challenges. We will make it through this winter. Europe will come out of it much stronger, and we will be ready to welcome you next spring in Moldova. Moldova is very keen to host the next summit of the European political community in Chisinau. Hosting the second summit of the EPC in Moldova, an eastern neighbor and a recent candidate to join the EU is a sign of support we value highly. We look forward to welcoming you um, at the next meeting in Chisinau to advance our work and cooperation within the EPC. Making Europe stronger and more resilient needs to be a continuous endeavor. Thank you. Thank you. And now I would like to give the floor to President of France, Emmanuel Macron. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre. Thank you very much, dear Peter. Thank you for organizing this first meeting of the European political community. And thank you to Madam President for proposing to organize a second summit uh, of the European political community in a few months in Chisinau. Uh, I think I would like to stress in particular how important this event is in a number of respects. It's an old idea which is now becoming slowly but surely a reality. What we wanted to achieve in meeting here in Prague is to bring together 44 sovereign states uh, which see Europe as a single entity, whatever the particular forms, the political or others, to discuss among equals as uh, sovereign states of problems that we face in common. That's exactly what we need. We have the European Union, which is a reality, it exists, and there are a number of countries around the table which want to join the European Union. Some have just left the European Union, and some simply do not wish to join. But what we all have in common is our geographical reality. We share a single continent, from the Caucasus to Iceland, and histories which are intertwined in many respects. There are things which bring us together to take, uh, to use the formula, which has been uh, repeated uh, on many occasions, which is that uh, the childhood illness of Europe is civil war. And by widening the scope 
of what we are doing, creating this wider European political community. This means that at, con at the level of our continent, the European continent, we try to solve our problems. I think that's a great strength. The first strong message that we want to send out, in addition to this common identity, we have shown the unity of 44 European countries, which have clearly said, all 44, that we condemn the Russian aggression and that we support Ukraine. That carries a lot of weight. And we know that Europe is divided in some respects, but in the, on this we are united. We are sending out a strong message. We heard a strong message from the uh, President of Ukraine, and we had with us the uh, Prime Minister of Ukraine. The European political community has enabled us to hold to, to meet in a way that up to now was not possible. This may seem childishly simple, naive, but uh, Prime Minister Pashinyan, who was elected in 2018, had never met President Erdogan in person, not until today here in Prague. And that is, carries a lot of weight. And when you share a continent and there are things that we need to do together, it is very useful that these meetings take place. This is what this session has achieved. The third point is that we had many discussions, and uh, I joined one uh, after our plenary this afternoon on the crises that our continent faces, the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia, the many crises in the Western Balkans, the tensions in the Eastern Mediterranean between Turkey and Greece and Cyprus. Uh, we spoke about these very openly and frankly today. It's very useful to have a forum for discussion where all the parties concerned can meet and where we can discuss these matters in person. President Michel, um, with the president of Azerbaijan, the president of Armenia, were able to meet with uh, Chancellor Scholz and the president of Kosovo and the president of uh, Serbia. These are very useful opportunities. This can really move things forward for our continent in an increasingly complex world. In the light of our discussions this afternoon, there are a number of key points which I want to highlight. Our common, firstly, our common projects. There is real convergence of views that among Europeans, we need to protect our key infrastructure. We saw that just a few days ago with the attacks against North Stream 1. We have key infrastructure, critical infrastructure, which concerns the European Union and the other European countries, gas pipelines, cables, satellites. We need a European strategy to protect them. And this is a common policy. It's not just a matter for the European Union, but for all the sovereign countries represented around this table. Secondly, Many European countries have been subject to cyber crime attacks. From uh, we have seen them coming from uh, Russia, from Iran, from uh, uh, Albania, and we have seen uh, many of us have been subject to cyber attacks from Russia in recent years. So having a strong strategy of intergovernmental cooperation to fight cyber crime, but also propaganda and misinformation. This is something on which we have, uh, need to have a common approach. Thirdly, in this format, we need to, have, uh, to dis be able to discuss a number of key regional issues, the Black Sea, the Baltic Sea, the North Sea, the Caucasus. These are issues of key importance to many European countries. We face serious challenges. We are facing challenges from, let me put it uh, mildly, from non-cooperative, uncooperative regional powers. An idea then raised by the Ukrainian, the president of Ukraine is that Europe should contribute to a resilience fund for Ukraine to help Ukraine come out of this as stronger than it went into the war for its army, for its economy, for its population. And then fifthly, to have a common energy policy, we need to coordinate our activities to push down energy prices. That's what, that is what we're trying to do in the European Union. We've had very interesting discussions on this. There are a number of European countries which are energy producers, gas producers, Norway and Azerbaijan, which were with us today to have a more 
better integrated strategy. This is very important in, in diversifying our sourcing of energy and to reduce our dependence on uh, external powers which do not share our values and we need to have a new strategy, a stronger strategy for renewables and for the future. And the sixth point, which is raised, a common policy for young people. This was raised in particular by the by a number of heads of state or government, Albania, Serbia, and Ireland, who stressed the importance of having a more, much more integrated uh, policy in terms of universities, university students. We have uh, the idea of a European university, uh, and for the young people of our continent, we need to strengthen cooperation between our universities, between our educational policies to enable our young people to have a genuine European culture across our borders. And then a last point, migration, on which we need to have a cooperation policy. We have taken full note of that. We need to have in the Western Balkans, in the European Union, uh, all the way to the United Kingdom. We need to have an integrated policy so that we can ensure that we are open for those who are fleeing uh, persecution and conflict, but we can also be more effective in combating uh, illegal uh, people smuggling and other such activities. I won't uh, go into any more depth about this, but we can see there these are many areas where we need to strengthen our cooperation, our intergovernment cooperation and regional cooperation. We need to ensure that this can be done in a more harmonious way at uh, Europe-wide level. Thank you very much, Mr. Prime Minister, for having organized this summit. We will proceed to the questions. As first, Czech television, please. Jakub Santo. Jakub Santo, pane premiere, vy jste mluvil... Prime Minister. You said that... Uh, this format does not uh, imply any conclusions, uh, but uh, burning issues uh, were discussed uh, and uh, swift responses are required here. Could, could you say a bit more about uh, migration and uh, about uh, further support, including military support for Ukraine? The Ukraine Prime Minister was that. You mentioned a number of um, key points, um, but what is of particular interest now is can Europe maintain and will it maintain its uh, current level of military support to Ukraine? Could you say a few more words? about which countries want to support uh, Ukraine in the coming months. Yes, indeed, uh, as Emmanuel, as President Macron said, the aim of this uh, event was not to draw formal conclusions because that would have complicated the entire discussion. Instead, uh, the huge uh, benefit of this uh, platform is this. I'm thankful to Monsieur Macron for having thought up this idea. This is a, a forum for representatives uh, of European countries to meet outside uh, the European Union. So in one room, we got together countries which don't normally meet. That in itself, that in itself is an achievement. So we had all these European leaders together in one room, in several rooms, that they talked to each other, they exchanged views, there were bilateral meetings. That is a huge benefit of this event and of this idea. Now, of course, we discussed specific subjects, I think that this event uh, will encourage us to uh, go further. Uh, I think that every European country faces the energy issue, the issue of energy prices. So we've got to tackle this. 
we have to diversify our energy sources away from Russia and uh, think of countries like Norway and Azerbaijan. These countries are prepared to contribute to this effort to cooperate with the European Union to help us. That is extremely important. Now, what about migration? Well, yes, this is a subject which we touched upon several times. There were various bilateral discussions uh, with Ursula von der Leyen. Uh, I met the Turkish president, Mr. Erdogan, and we talked about various open issues concerning the relations between the European Union and Turkey. We also talked about how to tackle migration. Mr. Erdogan uh, said that uh, as in the energy field, as in various other fields, he's prepared to continue cooperating with the European Union in order to tackle the problems with us. So it's this kind of political discussion. It's this kind of result uh, which is a huge benefit of this kind of platform. And uh, I'm convinced that uh, the, the vast uh, majority of uh, head state and government, uh, when they left uh, this evening, uh, were prepared to uh, continue along this path in Chisinau and elsewhere. Yes, indeed. We will continue to support Ukraine militarily, financially, and in terms of solidarity, we will continue to provide strong support, military and training support along the same lines we have been following for a number of months. We will continue to take uh, account of the requests we receive from uh, Ukraine. We'll continue to coordinate our activities and uh, indeed this very much includes the United Kingdom, not just the European Union. On the question of military aid to Ukraine, in addition to um, military support and financial support, President Zelensky has asked for more uh, military support and for military training by France. Will France be sending more Césars to Ukraine? Will it be sending new military equipment, missiles to Ukraine? Could you perhaps be a little bit more specific? I'll come back to that in more detail tomorrow in the press conference for an informal summit on this very issue. I will talk about a number of the particular uh, approaches we propose to follow. We have a number of specific requests uh, concerning Cesar and other military equipment. Um, Madam President, uh have you, have you said just now we must not allow energy to be used to undermine uh, democracies. Um, Moldova is in a particularly unique position with regards to acute energy supplies. Did you have conversations today that made you confident that if you are put under pressure this winter as you were last year, your European colleagues and friends will come to your support? And if I may, uh, Mr. President, um, today the UK Prime Minister Liz Truss decided that she would call you a friend uh, after all, and the two of you had what appeared to be a pretty productive meeting. Um, separately, your Czech colleague uh, has called for the UK to re-establish its connection to the North Sea Energy Cooperation Group. Is that something that you would support and France would support? And if so, given that would be the first EU initiative the UK would join after Brexit, do you see that as a turning of the page uh, of sorts? Thank you. Well, now that the leaders of 43 countries know in details the energy problems of Moldova, I am confident that we will get the, the necessary support. Uh, but of course, uh, we need to act quickly and we need to have specific solutions. And the uh, price affordability is an issue not just for Moldova, but for most of the countries. I'm confident. I think this is a very good news. Having the Prime Minister this was here in Prague is a, is a very good news and I think a very good choice she made. And uh, I think having the UK being engaged in a lot of common initiatives, I think does make sense. Both for the UK and for ourselves, because we do share the same continent. And we have a lot of uh, challenges in common. If you take energy, if you take migration, if you take geopolitics, so I think it's, it's very useful. 
I, I do hope this is a new phase of our common relations and this is the beginning of the day after. But our, our willingness is clearly to engage, to have concrete projects and to work all together for the unity of our continent, especially in these very challenging times, and for the interests of our people. And specifically on the North Sea, uh, do you think that's a good thing for the UK to be re-engaged with? I think it's very good for the UK to be re-engaged both in the North Sea and in the Cali Group as well as we decided to do so for migration issues. Being part of a regional approach, I mean, does make sense. Because this is an island, this is true, but this island didn't move from the rest of the continent. So we do have so many things in common and we have values and we have history and so on. So we will, I'm happy that we meet again. Thank you. That's all for tonight. Thank you for your attention and have a good night. Merci, Bye. merci, Peter.